Hello everyone, it's Susan again, here to read you another story. And I hope you enjoy this one. It's something a little bit different today. It's a story called, can you see that? How the Borks became a Bork. I wonder what a Bork is. Hmm. Well, we'll find out when we read this story. And this story is written by Jonathan Emmett. And the pictures are drawn by Ellis Doran, Dolan. I think it's Ellis. I may be saying that person's name wrong. I hope not. This is the author and this is the illustrator. Let's have a look and see what the story's all about. Okay, here we go. On a far away planet, quite like our owner, a bunch of Bork mothers had just given birth. So these must be the Borks, and they've just had some babies. To a great brood of Borklings in all shapes and sizes. Some look like their parents, but some are surprises. Hmm. The thing about Borks is no two are a match. They're all a bit different. Just look at this batch. Look, some of them have got big heavy horns. Look a bit, looks a bit cross really that one, doesn't he? Some of them are paler in colour. Some of them are big and round. Mm, look at this guy over here. He's got four eyes. Crazy. These odd little differences help the Borks thrive. Without them, it's doubtful they'd still be alive. You see, Borks haven't always looked as they do. Their fur was once short and its colour was blue. And those long skinny necks that make them so tall were once very squat and not skinny at all. Hmm. This might start you wondering Wondering how? How did the Borks become what they are now? What caused all these changes? What brought them about? Well, we'll have to go back a few years to find out. So the Borks used to look like this, and now they look like that. Gosh, that's different. I wonder how that happened. Let's find out. On a far away planet, quite like our own Earth, a bunch of Bork mothers had just given birth to a great brood of Borklings, all shapes and sizes. Some looked like their parents, but some were surprises. Hmm. While most of the Borklings had fur that was short, there were also a few of a shaggier sort. These shaggy furred Borklings, they looked kind of funny and they got rather hot when the weather was sunny. Nick. He has got big furry fur, shaggy fur, and most of them have got short hair. Hmm. But later that year, when the weather turned uh, chilly, the furry, shaggy furred borks did not feel quite so silly. While the shorter furred borks couldn't cope with the storm, their shaggy furred cousins kept perfectly warm. So look at that. Those guys who've just got short hair are a bit chilly. A bit like if you don't wear a jumper or a jacket when you go out in the cold. But the guys with the long fur, they're nice and cosy. And when the storm stopped and a new day arrived, only the shaggy furred borks had survived. So they kept nice and cosy, so they made it through the winter. That's good. So the next time a Borkling birthing occurred, all of the babies were born shaggy furred. While most of these offspring were bright shades of blue, some were bright yellow, but only a few. Hmm. So look, most of them are blue, but the odd one is yellow. These bright yellow Borklings looked rather bizarre and weren't very easy to spot from afar. 
as their fur blended in with the bright yellow moss which covered the plain that the Borks roamed across. And that's right, they are more tricky to see, aren't they? You can see the blue ones quite clearly, but the yellow ones are a little bit more difficult to spot. And my son always laughs at this bit. What's that Borkling doing? He's sniffing the other one's bottom. How rude. <laughs> They were roaming this plain on a hot sunny day when a ravenous snarl came flying their way. Now there's nothing a snarl likes more for its lunch than a beak full of borks. <gasps> so it snatched up a bunch. Look, he's grabbing them all in his claws. Oh dear. It gobbled up every last bork it could find every last one but it left some behind the big beastly bird would have gobbled the the lot but the bright yellow borks were too hard to spot so look those guys hid on the yellow moss and the ravenous snarfle didn't see them and so when the next batch of babies came through all the offspring were yellow not blue but while most of these Borklings had necks that were squat, there were also a few who had necks that were not. These skinny-necked Borklings looked rather absurd, with their heads towering over the rest of the herd. <laughs> do look a bit silly, don't they? But later that year, when the weather grew dry, these tall Borks were glad to have heads up high. With for without any rain, the moss shriveled up dead. And moss was the food on which every bork fed. So with nothing to eat, many borks died off too. Almost all of the herd, except for a few. For the skinny-necked borks, things were not quite so dire. Because, thanks to those necks, they could reach a bit higher. And feed on the branches of the jujubong trees. Jujubong trees. There they are, they look tasty. Which held lots of water within their thick leaves. Great. So, we're back where we started, but now you know how. You know how the Borks became what they are now. And if anyone asks you how this mystery was solved, you can tell them the answer. They simply evolved. So that's what evolution is. It's changing over time to adapt to the world around you. So these guys are now perfectly uh, suited to where they live. They can eat the right food, they can be the right temperature and they're the right colour uh, for doing well. That's good isn't it? Hmm. Which one do you think is the cutest one? I think they're all quite cute. Hmm. Right, well I hope you have a lovely day and you enjoyed that book. You can let me know.